Justin Verlander heads back to the Houston Astros. Does Jack Flaherty have a big second half with the Baltimore Orioles? Join us today where we talk about the biggest trades from the last few days on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. You can find me on Twitter at DomMartinoFB. Here, as always, with my brother, my co-host, my partner in crime, my best friend, Matthew Ane, and you can find him on Twitter at Matthew underscore Ane. If you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify, that allows five-star ratings and reviews. We would truly appreciate it if you could do that for us. Also, if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, hit the little bell below and subscribe to the channel. Also gives you a notification every time we drop a new episode. And lastly, but most importantly, subscribe to us on the Subtext website. On Subtext, it's an in-depth, personalized, one-on-one experience through text messaging you get instant alerts on prospect call-ups which are big this time of year injury alerts and you can ask us all of your burning fantasy baseball questions anytime and just a lot more than we could offer here in this 30 minute podcast today's episode is brought to you by sleeper swing for the fences on sleepers picks and you can win up to 100 times your money back download the sleeper app and use the promo code locked on you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply see sleepers tombs terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 states check out sleeper today locked on fantasy baseball fans we got a fully loaded episode for you and let us be your team secret weapon as we talk you through all of the big moves on this year's trade deadline and matt the biggest one of them all a first little jv action back to houston how do you feel about it brother to be honest, I like it a lot better than the Mets situation. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I agree. I second that one. I mean, like, I mean, the wins opportunities obviously skyrocketed, and the Mets are just a bunch of bozos. Oh, <laughs> but I mean, quite honestly, it's it's nice to see that you know Houston Astros were able to sneak it out, get him on that lineup. So I foresee Verlander getting a little bit more comfortable, getting a little bit more like, you know ready to rock because now he's probably going to be like, yeah, can I get my house back? Also, (laughs) can I get my uh, spot back and just be as elite as he was? Because you know what? I feel like also, too, he's a product of a new team and like a little bit of a down year. So now that he's back home, essentially, where he's been for like the last decade, you know, Verlander could turn it up and really, really, really take off in that second half. So this trade means not only a lot for the person, but for the fantasy outcome. And Verlander at home, when I say home, his home for the last decade, could well, be really like maybe not the last decade. I think but, like the last three years, four years. Well, well, you know what I mean. It feels like he's been there forever, but <laughs> where he's been for a long time is going to be um, re- really helpful for him. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm I'm on board with that. I think he feels a lot more comfortable in Houston than he did in New York. Um, the only thing is, I mean, it's not really much actionable fantasy baseball, right? If you have Verlander, you're happy. You know, you, you think things are going to get better than they have been, even though he's been pretty good over his last, you know, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, like seven starts, only two bad ones in his last seven. You know, um, not who he used to be at 40 years old, but you know what? He's definitely a high-end fantasy baseball starting pitcher. And you just like to see Justin Verlander get the chance to, you know, possibly finish his career back in Houston and make a nice, you know, playoff push with the Astros this year. Let's go on to a guy who's probably a little bit more actionable here in fantasy baseball, and it's Jack Flaherty going to Baltimore. Oh, real quick. You know what, Matt? Let's go back. We, we didn't even talk about the exchange for Verlander, what they got. Yeah, That's yeah. on me, guys. Yeah, so for v- Justin Verlander, you know, the Mets actually – Made out decent for a 40-year-old. They pick up Ryan Clifford, who is a 19-year-old for Houston. He plays a little first, plays a little outfield. Um, not a big guy. He's, you know, like a Jose Altuve. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Not him. Uh, I was thinking about Gilbert. But uh, Clifford's actually a big boy. 6'3", 200 pounds. Uh, he's got a little pop. 18 home runs and 83 games. Four steals, 291 batting average. 
not really much actionable on Clifford at the moment. Just a name to keep your radar on uh, for the next couple of years here. And then let's go over to um, Gilbert, who I was thinking of originally. He's 5'9", 195, a little bit more of the Jose Altuve type build. Uh, he's hit pretty good as far as average goes his whole minor league career. He's 22 years old. He plays a little bit of outfield there, a little bit all over the outfield. He's got 10 steals on the year, 12 bombs, and uh, counting stats are decent, 57 runs, 38 RBIs, and 81 games. Just that's the return for the Mets. I think it's decent, you know, because Verlander pretty much, you know, at the end of his career here. So pretty good for them. Now let's move on. I got a little excited. Now let's talk about Jack Flaherty. I love it. I think it's what he needed. I think he needed to get out of St. Louis, uh, get a fresh set of eyes on him as far as the pitching coaching goes, the coaching in general. Uh, I don't know. Jack Flaherty, it's it's tough to say what, what's going on with him exactly. I think it's a confidence thing, you know, coming off of all these injuries and stuff like that. He wasn't really handled very well in St. Louis, as, you know, Matt will attest to. And um, as I'm looking here through his baseball savant page, um, the velocity's down uh, like half a mile an hour on the fastball. He's actually up on the slider, his velocity. So it's not really a velocity thing. Um, the fly ball percentage looks good. Ground ball percentage looks good. So I, I think it's just a matter of just, you know, hey, uh, getting a different set of eyes on him. Flaherty is still only 45% owned on Yahoo. I, I think if things really start to turn up here, Flaherty does have like top 50 starting pitcher upside with even ace potential next year if they can really figure it out towards the end of this year. Love Jack Flaherty. Go and add him if you can. Yeah, my only thing about Jack Flaherty is, you know, what's the medical staff look like at the Orioles? Because that's really going to be the key in how, how they handle his injury because he still has a bum shoulder. Like, he got the um, the injections of the um, – uh, sorry. I want to say fetal tissue, but you know what I mean. Um, whatever. So, essentially, they use, like uh, – baby cells to then fix his shoulder and heal faster. So he does have a shoulder injury that he's been pitching on for years. So uh, I think that if they can handle him right, manage his innings right, he could be a uh, top arm next year. This year, rest of the season, I think it's sky's the limit as long as his shoulder doesn't give out. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, let me uh, let me move on. Uh, let's talk about Mr. Aaron Savali. We talked about him yesterday. I think he's a must-add in every league humanly possible. That Tampa Bay – situation i think is a giant boost he's about 73 percent owned so you know i think that you know he he's he's still available out in these leagues i think you should go and scoop him up if you can um trading for him is probably gonna be close to nearly impossible at this point but 100 percent savali should should be added i think this is gonna be massive for him for fantasy uh and the bonus of pitching in that park like we talked about last night but now let's talk the other side of this trade Kyle manzardo where Kyle Manzardo, I think, is getting called up pretty quickly. And the reason I'm going to say that is they also just traded um, – Josh Bell. Yeah, Josh Bell, who was playing first. I think they're like, hey, we just gave up Savali. We're giving up Bell. Let's make room for this young gun. Let's get him up. Let's start getting our young guys up. They're selling. They're getting rid of everything. So, you know, why why not call up uh, Manzardo? Start getting them, you know, a taste of the big league bats and let's see what happens. I think Manzardo, if he does get the call, I don't know how, ma- how much of fantasy relevance he's going to have for you know the short the short stint he's gonna have but you know if he does catch fire i think that he's gonna be very valuable so what i I say is just keep an eye out on watch him if he starts heating up out the gates i mean he's an instant scoop up for me yeah man i'm not i'm not gonna touch manzardo if you want to hear more about the breakdown on manzardo we talked about him a lot yesterday so go out and check out yesterday's episode but for savale i mean if you if you were listening like two months ago when he was working his way back from the injury we, we talked about him on all of the IL episodes, so you, you hopefully had him stashed, and he's just performed like an elite starting pitcher so far. Five wins, two losses, 2-3-4 two, ERA, 13 starts, 77 innings, 58 Ks, and a 103 whip. You know, over his career, Savali's never been really that K per nine kind of guy, so I'm not expecting that from him. He can have some big strikeout games because he got good stuff. That curveball is very, very good, Um, you know, good swing and miss pitch. But with Savale, upside is very, very high. I think the rest of the year, maybe like a low to mid three ZRA, you know, wins are going to be very, very good with Tampa. And, you know, the control over his career has been very, very good, too. So that's, you know, a lot to look forward to. So let's uh, before I move on here, we got, um, you know, coming up next is uh, the Phillies made a big move. Uh, the Diamondbacks got themselves a closer. And then we're going to finish up with a couple of more bats that are on the move. But before that. 
Got a quick sponsor here for you guys. We're going to talk about Sleeper. Sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. Sleeper has become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users in 2022. At Sleeper, it's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memories. Sleeper Picks is our real money product that connects friends over picks. Choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, live, or even across different sports. Pick higher or lower than the predicted stats. Only on Sleeper, you can get up to 100 times payout. Share with your friends and get rewarded together. Use the promo code locked on and you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. And guys, when Matt and I talk about Sleeper, we just love to say that besides all of the cool gaming aspects and fantasy related stuff on there, the alerts. Sleeper's very, very good for alerts. You get instant updates. Almost as fast as Matt and I on subtext, but you know what? We love Sleeper, so check them out today. And dear everydayers and new listeners, we have an incredible opportunity for you to support the show and enjoy some fantastic perks along the way, introducing the Diamond Club on the subtext website. By becoming a member, you not only contribute to the show's success, but also gain access to exclusive benefits, get your hands on waiver wire rankings, call up alerts, injury updates, instant reactions, and enjoy direct access to us for all of your burning fantasy baseball questions. Plus, you can try it out completely free for 14 days. Your support means the world to Matt and I, and we can't wait to connect with you on this exciting journey. Join the Diamond Club on the subtext website today and let us take your fantasy baseball experience to new heights. And guess what, guys? Most important about this, anyone that signs up for the subtext that's already signed up or signs up from now until September 1st, you get a potential chance to join our listener league for next year. As I've been saying, come on, show Matt and I how good you are. Fantasy baseball, come and try and take us on next year with that, you know, possible free first entry. All right, real quick. You know what, Matt? A uh, lot of talking for me. I gave my take on Savale. Why don't you hop in here with the next guy? Because he is headed to your Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah, let's talk about Mr. Michael Lorenz. Um, they, uh, it's an interesting one because Lorenz has had like a decent season so far. And what they gave up wasn't too much, in, in my opinion. I feel like it was kind of like just the right amount for Lorenz. It wasn't like they overpaid or anything of the sort. But let's talk about Lorenz right now. Um Lorenz has had Lorenz or Lorenzin. Lorenzin, I like Lorenz. <laughs> Lorenzin, Lorenz um, has had a, has had a solid month. Like quite honestly, with three wins, twenty one Ks, one one four ERA, and a point eight five WHIP on the season. He has a three five eight. He's looking he's looking good. Obviously, he's a K per nine. Like he's never really been a K per nine. He's usually like skating right under it and whatnot. But I mean, hey. Like, you know, let the kid do his thing. I think on Philly, there's going to be win opportunities. The thing is, he's not going to be protected by the the home park. Yeah, that's a big uh, one. Which is a big park. So I want to I want to see how he translates in City Field. Um, because I mean, no, it's not City Field. Citizens, Citizens, Citizens Bank. Bank. Citizens Bank. I go there all the time. Um, Citizens Bank Park because they do have the short porch. So, you know, I think that, you know, he as long as he can keep the ground balls down. And I create a lot of ground balls. I think he could be successful. On the other side of this, they gave up. I'm going to have to go to a baseball reference for this. Uh, who they traded for? Yeah. Uh, would, uh, how you Lee. Yeah. I'm not familiar with him either, Matt. It's not just you. He's a second baseman, shortstop, and third third baseman. Um, I'm going to just read off how he did this year. I'm not familiar with this, with this kid at all. But 258 at-bats, 36 runs. 13 doubles, a triple, five bombs, 29 ribs, 14 stolen bases, uh, and batted about 279. Ain't atrocious. I mean, let's, I mean, he's not really a stolen base guy. 14 stolen bases in 2022, nine home runs in 2022. And this is between A, A plus, and Rook Ball. So, I mean, the kid has a little upside, but like, I feel like Philly gave up like, uh, like a nobody kind of prospect to go out and get Lorenzen. So, I kind of, I, I kind of like the trade. I kind of like where this is going to give them depth, where I felt like if they made the playoffs, this is more of a real baseball take, where if they made the playoffs, they would be struggling to get that fifth uh, fifth pitcher out there. This kind of deepens them up and kind of gives you know other pitchers a break during those runs. But 
you know, Lorenzen could be very valuable for fantasy as well. Yeah, Matt, uh, very good take on Lorenzen. We're pretty much on the same page here. Uh, it adds depth to that rotation after Nola and Wheeler. I mean, Christopher Sanchez has been good of late, but you don't know how long that's going to last. Taiwan Walker, I don't know a Taiwan Walker anymore. I don't really trust him. Ranger Suarez has been very, very inconsistent this year. Yeah, got and I think, tonight. Yeah, I think I think Lorenzen will provide them with some consistency. It is a smaller park, as Matt mentioned. So I think Lorenzen it has a three five eight ERA on the year. A 388 FIP. FIP is fielding independent pitching, kind of an ERA indicator. I think he'll pitch closer to that 388 than where he is right now. Um, and he'll be all right. The the whip is at 109 this year. He's got pretty decent control. Not really like a, I'm not really like super hyped about this move, but I think you know it, it will pro- provide Lorenzo with a chance to get more wins. And he'll be pretty similar to the guy that he is, has been so far this year. Maybe the ERA goes up a little bit. Um, Lorenzen is 46% owned on Yahoo. I think it's worth it, you know, to give him a, a little chance to see how things go here in Philly. Maybe, like I said, with Flaherty, same applies to Lorenzen. New set of eyes on him. Maybe they help him tweak something, you know, just get a little bit better than he has been. He is 31, though, so yeah, you know, sometimes it's uh, hard to treat, uh, teach an old horse new tricks. So let's uh, move on here, and let's talk about Paul Seawald. Uh, Paul Seawald goes over to the Arizona Diamondbacks to close over there. And Seawald's just been pretty damn good the last few years. This year, 43 innings pitched, 60 strikeouts, 21 saves, 3 wins, 2.93 ERA, and a 102 whip. Gives that Diamondbacks that, you know, solid guy at the back of the bullpen that they needed. But let's talk about the return. The return is just, uh, I really love the return here for um, Paul Seawald. It's Brian Bliss. Um, I know Ryan Bliss because he's my favorite one in the trade. I'm trying to pull up the other two guys here that they got for Seawald. Well, let's start with Ryan Bliss. Matt, maybe you could pull up the other guys for me. While I'm... Oh, Dominic Canzone was one of the other ones. And there was one other third guy. But uh, Canzone and Bliss are the two better ones. So I'm going to talk about Bliss here real quick. I, I think this kid is actually, actually very, very good. I talked about a Jose Altuve comp, and that's the exact comp for Bliss. He's 5'6", 165. He plays middle infield, uh, second and short. And Josh the- Rojas. Yeah, oh, and Josh Rojas. Jo- Josh Rojas is uh, somebody that if you've been playing fantasy baseball the last couple of years or just watch baseball in general, you probably heard about him. But Ryan Bliss, man, this kid's been very, very good this year. 81 games, 349 at-bats, 73 runs, 27 doubles, 6 triples, 13 homers, 51 RBIs, 35 steals, and a 332 batting average. The thing is, though, I will preface it by saying this. Uh where the, the the PCL the Pacific Coast League is where you know Bliss was playing in AAA. It's very hitter friendly there, so you know his numbers jumped up a crazy amount from the last few years. But the kid has good batting average upside. He's very very quick. Not a lot of power. I think the 13 home runs and the 27 doubles are a little bit high for his future. But Ryan Bliss is definitely somebody you want to keep your eye on. And Dominic Canzone is pretty good too. I mean, the kid was uh, in the bigs for the last little bit. Uh, I forget exactly how many games, you know, he plays uh, outfield a little bit. Not a big guy at 5'11", 190. He's played 15 games so far in the bigs for Arizona this year. Didn't really take off yet, but he's been pretty solid in the minors this year. In the minors, can zone 71 games, 61 runs, 18 doubles, 3 triples, 16 homers, 71 RBIs, 2 steals, and a three fifty four batting average. Canzone is the one that's a little bit more major league ready as he had been in the majors already this year. His batting average in his career has always been around 300 in the minors. He's got decent pop, a little bit of speed too. So that's that's probably one of my more favorite returns in a trade this year for giving up you know somebody that's pretty solid in Paul Seawold. So those guys are just some young kids you want to keep your names on, uh, your eyes on, <laughs> keep your eye on those names. And uh, that's about it for me, Matt. That was a little bit of a long-winded take, but I was actually pretty happy about this trade. I think uh, Seattle got a good return. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was actually a decent haul for an older uh, closer. And I got a great, great, great nickname for uh, um, what's his face? Um, Which one? Guy. The one that started with a C. Go for it. Um, a Canzone, Dominic can- Canzone. Yeah, Canzone. Uh, the um, Calzone. <laughs> I like that one. I like that. He looks like he's Italian too. Yeah. So. Yeah, the Calzone. I'm loving it. But uh, you know, before we move on, I start talking about. You know, a guy that got traded over from Washington to the Cubs, 
um, you know, guys coming out of Colorado and with their fantasy outlooks and a shortstop that honestly could be completely irrelevant. We'll see what happens. All right. And we're back. All right. So let's talk about, let me, let me get this right from baseball reference, a J mayor, Cal Delirio. Okay. Yeah, that was good. That was Jim, it. J mayor, Derek uh, Candelario. Okay. So he's having a career year. Okay. Uh, quite honestly, his numbers are nowhere near what he normally does. Um, you know, the doubles are pretty much there in 20, like 2021. He has 30 already, but like, here's his, here's his total stat line, right? In 368 at bats, he has 57 runs, 30 doubles, two triples, 16 bombs, 53 ribs, six stolen bases. He's batting 258. He's a 243 hitter, uh, career hitter, but over 2022, 2022, he hit 217. Um, 2021 was decent with 272. 2020 is out the window. And then he hit 203 in 2019. 2019. So, like, quite honestly, he's all over the place. Like, this right now is what I'm looking at for a career year, in all honesty. He's almost at his career high for home runs because his career high is 19. He's at 16 already. It's the halfway mark for him. Um, Batting average is clearly up. Uh, Doubles are up with it, almost at his career high. Uh, it's the second already. I mean, I think he's an overinflated. I feel like they scooped him out up for the now because Cubs are looking like they're going to try and take a little bit of a run at it since they didn't sell at all, really. So I could see where, where why they would try and go after a guy like him and see what happens. I don't really like his fantasy value all that much. It's not somebody I'm going to run out there and add or anything of the sort, but he may be somebody we were talking about adding and dropping throughout the season as somebody you can kind of stream and ride the wave with as he's hot and cold all throughout the season. Dom, you look like you feel different on that. Um, a little bit. I what everything you said is pretty much accurate there. My whole thing is, is I was kind of looking at this from like a points league perspective though too, because in a points league you usually get a lot of credit for doubles, and he's up there. And as far as the league leader goes in doubles, with he's already got thirty, sixteen bombs. The counting stats are going to go up on that Cubs team because you're playing in Washington. That's a that's a wasteland over there. So the runs are going to go up, RBIs are going to go up. You know, he's already got six deals, which is a career high with the bigger bases. He's probably moving around a little bit more. And as you said, the batting average has been all over the place. He's a career two forty three guys at two fifty eight this year. So if he stays in like the two fifty range. To, maybe this year, you know, stays in that 250, 260 range. Looks like he's made some adjustments here. I like Candelario. He's 50% owned on Yahoo. And uh, if you need a third baseman, third base has been a little bit tough this year. Uh, I think it's worth the ad to see where it goes. I think in his debut, he's um, hitting sixth today. So, you know what, man? I, I think it's just worth a shot. If, you, uh, if you're in a deep league, you're in a, a deep 12, a 14, I think you kind of just you could throw him at the end of your bench there, pop him in on, you know, when other guys got days off and kind of just see where the thing goes with Candelario. Not a huge fan, but I think there is value there. So let's move on. And it's so funny that this trade literally happened after, our, Matt, what was it, our Monday episode when we were doing Wave Wire? And yeah. we talked about Randall Gritchick. And him and his buddy CJ Crone go all the way over to, you know, the Angels. They boost that lineup a little bit. Uh, but that's the thing. CJ Crone specifically is so bad away from cores. His um, home and road splits were atrocious last year. And uh, I, I don't know how much value he's going to provide, especially since he's been banged up all year um, on the year so far. Let me get you those numbers for him. On the year so far, it's 258 batting average, only 11 homers, 33 RBIs, 31 runs, and 57 games, also 12 doubles. But those power numbers are going to sap. He, he's not going to hit the 29 and 28 home runs he hit the last two years. The batting average isn't going to be that 281 from 2021. Uh, he had a really bad second half last year. So with Crone, I don't really see a lot of upside in this move. Gritchick kind of going to have like the same issues there where he's not going to be as good as he's been this year in cores. Uh, but you know what? I mean, depends on where Gritchick is hitting in the line. Let me see. Was he in the lineup tonight for the Angels? Yeah, he's hitting seventh. I, I really don't like that for him. So, I mean... I, I, I think both these guys take a hit, and it's sad to see because I really like them both in Colorado. Just not a big, big fan of them moving forward. I probably like Gritchick a little bit more than Crone going forward. 
Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, anything's half possible. I mean, guys obviously leaving le- leaving course is always an issue and a concern. Who knows? Maybe they get a little, like, uh, jolt of energy because now they're playing next to Otani. Trout should be back. Like, they have an op- they're trying to make a push to, you know, keep Otani there. And they're also probably like, oh, wow, I'm excited to get off, you know, the – the wasteland of Colorado Rockies where, you know, I could, I could possibly have a little bit more enticement to actually play my best. So I could kind of see maybe them turning around, but I'm obviously, you know, not thrilled for them in fantasy perspective, just because I do like, like you said, like you don't really foresee a value outside of when they're hot. So we'll see. I mean, I could see them doing something, but at the same time, it may take a little bit, but let's move on. Real quick, Matt, before we do, let me let me throw this out there. So mm-hmm. last year, C.J. Crone's home and away splits. I'll, st- I'll start with the good. Let's start with his home. 73 games, 281 at-bats, 53 runs, 14 doubles, two triples, 22 homers, 75 RBIs, and he hit 303 at home last year. That's C.J. Crone. C.J. Crone away, 77 games, so four more games, 294 at-bats. So you're talking about 13 more at-bats. 26 runs compared to the 53, 14 doubles tied with doubles, one less triple, seven home runs. So he played four more games in the second half, and he hit almost 20 less home runs, uh, 27 RBIs compared to the 75 at home, and he had 214 CJ Crone. Uh, I, I just I don't foresee it happening. I just I don't think it's going to happen for CJ Crone with the Angels. Uh, I don't know. You might you, you might think differently, but I, I'm kind of out on Crone at the moment. But uh, you want to grab this last guy? Should I take him, Matt? How, how do you want to run this last this last guy here? I got it. Let's talk about the most irrelevant irrelevant name in this whole list. Let's talk about Mr. Paul DeYoung. Um, you know, he's having an okay season, but I mean, it's really like nothing that's going to be like fantasy worthy at all. 279 at bats, 38 runs, uh, 11 doubles, 13 homers, 32 ribs, four stolen bases. And my guy got also got caught stolen bases four times, stealing bases four times. He's batting 233. Like Paul DeYoung, this is what happens with him every year. He's going to have this little stretch of brilliance where it's going to last maybe two, three weeks. You're like, oh my God, he's going to do it. That's when you pick him up. And then after that, you drop him. Once he even goes cold, just even for two days, bye. Because then it's just going to be cold city. And it is what it is. He might even be a sell high, like, you know, throw him in. But right now it hasn't happened. So I'm going to say trade deadline's probably around the corner. So unless it happens next week and he gets a surge of energy, it ain't going to pose any threat. I don't even want to look at him. I don't care about him. I don't care what's going on with Paul DeYoung other than the fact that he got traded. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much on board. You know, Paul DeYoung heads over there to Toronto. It's a better team. But, I mean, he's 4% owned. I will say this. So there's some really deep leagues out there, you know, where, you know, even like an AL only, he's going to be available. And now at 4% owned for Paul DeYoung, I mean, in some of those deep leagues, 15s deeper, you know, 14 um, man leagues, you can give him a shot. But you know what? After those first, I remember those first three years with the Cardinals for DeYoung. He had so much promise, especially that 2019. He had 30 home runs, 97 runs. He had nine steals, 78 RBIs. I know the batting average was only 233, but he was 25 years old. Now he's 29. Hasn't really shown much since. But you know what? Little tiny bit of speed, little tiny bit of pop. The runs and RBI should be decent in that Toronto lineup. Batting average, I mean, he's a career 233 guy, and that's what he's hitting this year. So that says enough about DeYoung. I mean, I I might take a shot on him in some really deep leagues and just see where the thing goes with the kid. But other than that, um, you know, I'm really not too much to see here with DeYoung. Matt, anything else you wanted to talk about before we head out here, brother? Um, No, just make sure you guys sign up for the subtext to get in the Lister League. Um, Dom forgot to do it, but I didn't feel like uh, calling him out this time. No, I, I, I talked about it today. <laughs> I'm busting your chops. Yeah, I was going to say, today I actually, you're going to bust my chops, and today I actually remembered. I know, I'm going to still bust your chops. But, uh, uh, real quick, I do have one tiny thing. We got we got a little bit here. Uh, a sneaker, a, a, a sneaker, a sleeper, 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 you know, player that got moved. Um, the Tampa Bay Rays picked up Adrian Sampson from the Cubs. And I find that super interesting. He's actually 0% owned on Yahoo. The last two years, Samson's been sneaky, sneaky good. Uh, let's do a combined real quick. 
I know I picked up Samson last year, and he contributed to me winning a couple of championships. The last two years, the wins five and seven because he's on that Cubs team for Adrian Samson. 303 ERA, 24 starts, 139 innings, 101 strikeouts, and a 118 whip. So, I mean, the kid was pretty good. I don't know if he's going to get into that rotation in Tampa Bay, but if he does, Adrian Sampson is a name to look out for. That was a little sneaky one for the guys who snuck around, uh, stuck around to the end of the episode. But other than that, guys, that is all for us today. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Also, thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. Shout out to the everydayers and new listeners because you all make us what we are today and we couldn't have been where we are without you guys. But make sure you lock on tomorrow for a new episode. We're going to be talking about the best must-add players heading into the weekend, guys. But until tomorrow, see you. Peace.